I don't know if I'm going to title this Never Gonna Give You Up, Never Gonna Let You Down. Nah. Maybe Show Must Go On. That's, that's very corny. Maybe just something that makes more sense. I don't know. Hi everyone and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I haven't been here for uh, quite a while. I've been gone. The last time I was here, I talked about uh, several problems that I had over the last half year or the last year. I have been dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety. I said that I would take some time for myself to heal myself, to come to my senses. Because spending so much time receiving sweet death threats from people and insults, that's, that's really, really sweet, really gives you a great day every day. So I needed some time to heal myself, and I didn't really tell what I was going to do during this break. What I actually did was I went to Turkey. I stayed there for about, for almost two weeks to make peace with uh, Turkey and with my past. Because if you don't know my story, uh, I was born in Germany to Turkish parents. So to parents who were originally from Turkey. And at some point I had to move to Turkey with them and live in Turkey for about uh, 10 or 11 years. And I really didn't like that country. Over that entire time I ended up just hating that country so much and at the same time losing my faith in islam and being in a muslim environment was just really too much when i left the country i left it with so much hate so much resentment since i have been dealing with so much anxiety and depressive thoughts and all that stuff recently i thought uh, it would also be a good idea to go back to turkey and make a little bit uh, peace while I was there, I thought I should do the right thing and also talk to my parents about everything that I feel, everything that I think about this religion, about my upbringing. And I told my parents for the first time that I don't believe in Islam and that I'm openly criticizing Islam. Some people might be surprised, but my parents did not indeed for a very long time know that I left Islam and that I'm doing this publicly. Some people reacted very funnily to that. Do they know today? No, they don't. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> You're on That's YouTube. Hold on. In the end, I finally told them. I finally got it out. I finally shared it with them. It didn't go very well. It didn't go very terribly either. I don't know if it really went well or not. I'll, I will share more about that uh, in a few days. I want to give it a little bit more time. But yeah, that, that's what I did. I also spent some time in Istanbul to just kind of see what the country has become, to understand the people, to, as said, make peace. And uh, it is weird. I was in Istanbul and suddenly this earthquake happened. I tweeted about the earthquake, but I didn't really say that I was there. But I was in Istanbul and I was sitting in a restaurant with an old friend who owns a restaurant in Istanbul. Uh, we were talking about life and about how everything has uh, changed, about what's going on. And then suddenly everything starts shaking. And I, I, at first I thought, I thought I was just having a panic attack, one of those panic attacks that I have been having for a while. And... <laughs> And he, he looked at me, he was he was thinking that I was shaking the table. And then he said, earthquake! And we started running out and we ran to the other side of the street. It was terrible. Everything is shaking. There is a lot of noise. You can see the glass, you can hear the glasses, the walls shake, the doors shake. And as I was running out, I, all, I, I even saw little pieces fall off the wall, like, you know, paint. The funny thing is, as I was standing out there, and trying to be safe from the earthquake, together with my anxiety, that was, that was really a crazy feeling. The bad thing is, you look around and you are in this place that is just surrounded with buildings, and there is nowhere to go. If suddenly, if the earthquake was so strong, and everything started to collapse, there would be no place to go. You don't know where to go, there is no shelter, nothing. It's crazy. Anyways, gladly nothing happened, it was very loud, very terrible. Uh, it was over within a few seconds. It turned out that it was an earthquake of uh, 5.8 magnitude, which is very scary if you are there. But not much happened except that the minaret of a mosque uh, collapsed and was damaged. Allah, what are you doing to your places of worship. Speaking of Allah, once the earthquake was over and we went inside the building again and sat down, uh, five minutes later some person came who was a friend of this friend, who was an older person. And uh, when we mentioned the earthquake, he said something along the lines of, 
well, people deserve it. And I thought, oh my, oh my, here we go, here we go. So he went on and said, well, you see how, how, the, how the women are dressed outside and how they are walking outside with their, with, their, with their arms revealed, with tank tops. People deserve this earthquake. And I thought, oh my, so much for making peace with Turkey. I really, I really didn't want to get involved and say anything in response at all to this person. So I just uh, started focusing on my, on my phone and checking Twitter and the news about this, this earthquake. And this guy kept on rambling about how immorality is a, is, is a problem and Allah is punishing us. And all that garbage that I missed so much in my life. Only five minutes later, this same guy who was just blaming women with tank tops for the earthquake suddenly said that America was responsible for the earthquake. I'm not kidding. He said, this is a system called HARP. America is... <laughs> America is able to control the weather and the, the planet and make it shake and cause earthquakes concentrated in specific places like this specific part of Turkey, Istanbul. And America caused Istanbul to shake with an earthquake because America wanted to send a message to Turks and wanted to intimidate us, wanted us to, 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 to know our place. What he means is the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program in Alaska. A research program that is the target of such conspiracy theories. And this guy was telling us that America, through this research problem, was causing earthquakes around the world. Specifically at that place at that time. How does it even make sense? How does it make sense that America would cause these earthquakes to send a message to Turkey when most people are not even insane enough to believe that America would be behind this earthquake? And, and, how... <laughs> How are women with tank tops responsible for the earthquake? But then also the earthquake is made by America through a research program in Alaska. Does that mean America is Allah? Does that mean Allah is America? So does that mean when people say Allahu Akbar, they actually mean America is great and Israel is their messenger. So making peace with the country... I don't know, I still wanted to stick to my plan. Exploring Turkey, I noticed that a lot of things changed. Things have become very, very expensive because there has been a currency crash. The Turkish lira is currently worthless compared to other currencies, compared to the dollar. Uh, and that's because of Turkey's policies, because of Turkey's authority, increasingly authoritarian system, which is why people don't want to uh, invest in Turkey much anymore, which is why Turkey's uh, future seems bad and the economy becomes un uncertain and the Turkish currency crashes and things become more expensive. Basic electronic devices become more expensive because they need to be imported from different countries and the national currency doesn't uh, isn't much worth and you need to pay more to buy more, which means the local people uh, don't have enough money to buy the most recent electronic devices, which means the government has to do something to make the people able to buy these electronic devices because otherwise the country is going to be more and more backward, which means they have to increase the minimum wage and people's general uh, wealth. And then if, this currency, if the currency heals again, then people have too much money, which means Turkey is currently in a very messed up situation. People are increasingly sick of this authoritarian system of an Islamist government that combines with a nationalist party and tries to rule the country doing whatever they want to do without listening to democracy, listening to sense, listening to opposition, listening to anything. So I've seen a lot more people who were uh, open-minded, who were sick of where the country is headed. And I saw that Turkish rap is becoming popular. And people are, and the younger people are expressing their dissatisfaction with the government and with the country and with how women are treated terribly through Turkish rap, which gave me the idea, maybe I should do Turkish rap. No, but what I thought is, maybe I should make a Turkish channel and address Turkish people directly and talk to Turkish people directly about how uh, how their religion deceives them and how their governments and how religious organizations within the country deceive them and what their religion actually is because many people in Turkey don't actually understand and know Islam very well 
And if they became more familiar with what Islam actually is, and what it actually teaches, they would turn their backs. And we see that. We see a, a very massive increase in people doubting Islam in Turkey and similar countries, which really gives me the idea, maybe I should make videos in Turkish. Let me know what you think about that, if you think anything about that at all. In other news, when we come back to anxiety and uh, how everything has developed, I have really managed to better understand myself, to better understand what I what I need, to better understand how uh, how to cope with my mental problems, where my anxiety is coming from, where my stress is coming from, and and what my stress is concentrated on. So I gave myself a lot more time to heal myself, to understand myself, to admit to myself that uh, that I do have problems with my mental health at times which gives me anxiety and that i should just uh just acknowledge that and just be able to manage that i just started to think of it as an injured leg or a broken leg uh, mental health is very similar to physical health and many people are not aware of this because mental health issues are often stigmatized because people used to think that uh, that mental health problems mean we are crazy and we are possessed and whatever so when I think about my recently developed anxiety disorder, I just think of it as if my leg was injured. If my leg is injured or broken, then I should acknowledge that my leg is injured or broken and I should try to fix it. I should try to get the appropriate help and I should be motivated to fix this. Acting like my leg is completely fine and completely okay won't fix the problem. Ignoring it won't fix the problem. Just telling myself things like, oh, I, my leg is actually strong, I can do whatever I want, Don't, won't fix the problem. The best thing to do is to acknowledge the pain and the injury and then treat it. Giving myself more peace, more time, forgiving myself more has helped me a lot. Ignoring negative sentiments more and more has helped me a lot. Ignoring all these people who ideologically driven and emotionally charged come and tell me that they wish I died. Ignoring those and understanding where they are coming from has helped me to cope, to cope better with stress. And maybe I could take some time to talk more about anxiety and how to deal with stress. It could help more people. Speaking of, a lot of people have uh, reached out to help me and to offer their help, to, uh, to give me advices or to ask me for advices about, uh, since I posted my last video, The End of the Apostate Prophet. And I still didn't get back to everyone, but I want to thank everyone very sincerely for that. It has helped me a lot, and I want to get back to people, I want to talk to people more about their advices, I want to give people advices. But finally, what I also came to is what I should do with this whole apostate prophet thing. I, th I thought about my positions regarding Islam, and whether I want to keep doing this, whether I want to really involve myself in fighting Islam and telling people about why I left Islam and telling people what is wrong with Islam and uh, giving people information and advices about Islam. And I ended up thinking, I am very passionate about this, not just because it's so much fun, <laughs> but also because uh, I have been very personally involved in this. It has affected me personally very much. I have been in environments where I have seen a lot of people who were personally affected by Islam because I have been an Islamic student, an Islamic missionary, an Islamic apologist myself. And I know how, I know the problems with Islam. I know that it treats people terribly. I know that people suffer from Islam. And I would like to help put an end to that, at least for as many people as we can reach, and more to come in the future. So yes, I want to keep doing this, especially looking at how governments and organizations fund and invest in a project where actors go to the West and to other places to sell this product called Islam as something very attractive by deceiving people. That motivates me much more to go out there and to talk more about Islam and to reveal what Islam really is, because I know this religion and I practiced this religion. At that time, I also questioned my whole uh, position and I thought, there are so many things in life that I am always so sure about, that we feel so sure about, that turn out to be wrong. What if I'm wrong about Islam? I thought I could be wrong about my beliefs in uh, my beliefs regarding 
spirituality and God and science and this and that. There could be so many things that I might be that I might feel so sure about, but it turns out that I'm actually wrong about these things. Can be. I'm open to everything. But when I come to Islam, I thought about whether I can be really wrong about Islam. And I concluded that I am not wrong about Islam at all. I can not be wrong about Islam at all. I believe, no, I know that I am on the right side of history concerning Islam. I know that I made all my conclusions regarding Islam because I practiced and studied Islam diligently for many years. And I evaluate Islam not only from an opponent's position, but also from the position of someone who formerly advocated for Islam so much and who really loved Islam so much, who was really so involved, who really practiced Islam so much. Uh, which is funny because when I, when I now look at people who are like pop Muslims trying to impress girls online who tell me, you are probably never a real Muslim to begin with, I just think, shut up, man, f*** off. Anyways, I have concluded that I'm definitely not wrong about Islam and that I will be here to talk about Islam, to warn against Islam, to, to go on doing what I'm doing in a much better way, with more dedication, more motivation, more sincerity. And I will not only keep this limited to videos, as I have said before. So to all those who have been going around uh, saying, oh, I'm so glad he's gone, I hope he never comes back, I am back. And I will be here. I'm here for good. I'm not going anywhere. I will be dealing with this. You better deal with that. Bitch. Sorry, I couldn't resist. It just fits so well. Anyways, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all so much for coming. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for listening to me. Thank you all so much for your support. And to all those who say, oh, you want to destroy Islam, but you will die before Islam dies. Well, I know. Maybe I will die before Islam dies, but I'm certain that I want to be one of the pioneers of the end of this terrible idea disguised as a religion. So brace yourselves. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and stay away from Islam, as always.